Welcome to Standing Firm Tribulation Radio, broadcasting the truth in the last days, giving commentary to the latest news, encouraging the faithful remnant through God's Word to help you stand firm. This is a worldwide ministry to all of God's children, of which many are currently undergoing intense persecution while others are facing an onslaught of demonic activity, extreme weather, and catastrophic disasters. We have another great show planned for you today. If this is your first time to the show, you're encouraged to text your questions or comments to our dedicated number. That's 512-368-7614. Again, that number is 512-368-7614. Please send me any questions or comments that you might have. Please remember to include your first name. Every show is meant to bring hope and encouragement to every Christian to stand firm while we wait upon Jesus Christ to return in glory for His church. You're listening to Tribulation Radio. This is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2015 in the year of our Lord. I'm Daniel Blair broadcasting Tribulation Radio. I'm broadcasting to the faithful remnant living in the last days. New World Order, Discerned, Not Deceived, is our topic for today's broadcast. But before we get started, I do want to discuss briefly some things that are scheduled for this week. Pope Francis arrives in Washington within the hour. At 9.15 a.m. tomorrow, Barack Obama welcomes the Pope to the White House. And then on Thursday, September 24th, at 10 a.m., he speaks to both houses of Congress. This is the first time in history that a Catholic Pope has ever spoken to both houses, which is even more intriguing when you consider that he was only invited to speak to the Senate, but it was he who requested to speak to both houses of Congress. Then on Friday, September 25th at 8.30 a.m., the Pope will meet with the United Nations General Assembly that will address the Sustainable Development Agenda. I will be discussing more of this in the next week's broadcast, along with the total lunar eclipse, the super blood moon, and the Feast of Tabernacles, which begins on the same day. Let's begin by talking about biblical discernment. In the last days, so-called prophets, politicians, and religious leaders have arisen speaking and saying different things. But where's the discernment? Without biblical discernment, it has created a matrix of confusion, casting most in the depths of darkness, who are then willing to blindly follow anyone who speaks with a polished rhetoric and outrageous promises. On the other hand, we must have biblical discernment to expose the lies and to rescue those who have been taken captive through their sorceries. So what is biblical discernment? It's much more than just memorizing a few favorite verses of Scripture. It's much more than memorizing and quoting a religious leader's slant on the truth. It's much more than taking an eschatological viewpoint and forcing it upon all Scripture. It's much more than parroting the speech of a popular, political, or religious personality. Biblical discernment is putting all of God's Word into our heart, and that can only happen when we become doers of the Word. It begins in our mind and remains in our heart by following God's commandments for all of life, allowing it through faith to transform our miserable lives. The Bible says, But solid food is for full-grown men, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern good and evil. Hebrews 5.14 Solid food moves beyond the milk of God's word to the many other truths that will bring us into maturity. This is the first and most important step toward biblical discernment. As we continue our spiritual growth into all truth and understanding, we realize that all of God's Word must be relevant for all of life. Therefore, it is essential that nothing is added or taken away from what He has given us for all of life and godliness. Very few in our day really come to the truth and allow it to make a real difference in their life. They never experience the new life in Christ. In fact, most people keep polluting their minds with all the trash in the world, making it impossible for them to discern the truth from a lie. For example, 
I have known many people who can memorize all that psychology has to say about who and what they are. They can explain the label placed upon them by the professionals of psychiatry and the different drugs that they are now required to take for the rest of their life, but are unable to explain how God's truth alone can make them into a new creation. They have been deceived by the counterfeit miracles of our age, believing that their worldly counselors and prescription drugs will solve their problems and give them a better life. But let me stress, these so-called miracles are counterfeit and have no power to transform your life into a beautiful new creation. The Bible says they perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will bleed the lie. See 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12. What deeply saddens me is that the Catholic Church, along with many evangelical churches, has believed this lie, thus keeping many from experiencing their new life in Christ. In the book of Revelation, it says that the merchants were the great men of the earth, for by their sorceries were all nations deceived. See Revelation 18:23. Yes, all the nations will be deceived by big business and specifically big pharma. The word sorceries is where we get the word pharmacy and pharmaceutical. Therefore, the Catholic Church, the great harbinger of social justice, is in league with the devil to drug God's people, keeping them from ever experiencing their new life in Christ. The second step in biblical discernment is to allow other mature believers along with you to discern if what they are hearing is truly of God and not of man. The Bible says, And let the prophets speak by two or three, and let the others discern. 1 Corinthians 14.29 This is a beautiful verse because it shows the necessity of the body of believers in true biblical discernment that's sorely needed in our day. Not every Christian is at the same point in his or her journey towards spiritual maturity. Not every Christian has the same spiritual gift needed for the edification of the body of believers. So as you come together in your Bible studies and times of worship, you will be mutually taught and encouraged through God's anointed word. Dear friends, get confirmation from other mature believers to keep you from being led astray by the cunning men in our day, both political and religious personalities. Dear children, without biblical discernment, you will be deceived. In fact, the entire world, other than those who have had their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, will be deceived. Dear children, this week we will need every ounce of discernment when listening to Barack Obama and Pope Francis. When Barack Hussein Obama said that he would bring change to America, unfortunately, this time he was not lying. So much has changed over the past six years, it's nearly impossible to get our hands completely around it. But with God's, we shall prevail. This change has come upon our shores like a tidal wave, overcoming the simple-minded, emboldening the immoral, and deceiving the religious. Step by step, He has broken down the walls, allowing every manner of wickedness to infiltrate our beloved nation through legislation, the Supreme Court, and executive orders. We are no longer asked, but demanded to accept homosexuality, same-sex marriage, and the transgender. We are no longer asked, but demanded to accept the 85,000 refugees, most of them from Syria, next year, and to accept the increase to 100,000 the following year. We are no longer asked to accept the Islamic faith, but demanded that we show tolerance by allowing their diabolical teachings into our local schools and influencing our religious leaders to have dialogue and joint prayer services. This, my friend, is all done in preparation for the new world order that will require acceptance of all people, their culture, their language, and their belief system. I find that the changes the Pope is making rather astonishing when you consider the history of the Catholic Church, who has always taken the opposite position as being a closed society of true believers, willing to persecute those who held a different belief and warring against the Islamic faith seen as the devil incarnate. 
From almost the beginning, it had always believed that those who stood outside the church were destined for the fires of hell and eternal damnation. What would cause Pope Francis to enter a mosque in Turkey and pray alongside a Muslim cleric, praying to a different god? Is he following the example of Barack Hussein Obama, who also removed his shoes and kneeled down with the Muslim clerics in a joint prayer service as they prayed to Allah? What would cause the Pope to implore all churches in Europe to take in a Muslim refugee family? So does this mean that they will now be praying to their God, Allah, in the structure where Christians regularly meet to worship and pray? What has caused this complete reversal where they are now willing to bring all faiths together in unity, demonstrating a degree of tolerance never before seen? What would inspire him to say the following in Cuba on this past Saturday? It is a sign of the victory of the culture of encounter and dialogue the system of universal growth over the forever dead system of groups and dynasties. Clearly the Pope is set on a path to break down the walls of separation, thus bringing forth unification among the world's leaders and preparation for a new world order. We have seen the signs of deception where Pope Francis is relaxing some laws within the Catholic Church, praying with and accepting the Islamic faith and mutual dialogue. As we wait in anticipation of Pope's speech this week to both the UN and the both houses of Congress, let's briefly examine some of his latest speeches that should give us an eye for discernment. In a speech to the popular movement in Bolivia, he used the word change 30 times. One wonders if he has taken a page from Obama's playbook. It appears the change he was looking for was continuing his social programs and lifting all people up to the same level throughout the world, taking care of Mother Earth, and relaxing the culture and religious barriers that separate us. He said, they want their culture, their language, their social process, and their religious traditions to be respected. Clearly this could only be accomplished if all world leaders would come together. With as many references to globalization, he also said, We want a change which can affect the entire world, since global interdependence calls for global answers to local problems. Furthermore, he has said to our brothers and sisters in the Latin American indigenous movement, Allow me to express my deep affection and appreciation of their efforts to bring peoples and cultures together in a form of coexistence, which I would call polyhetric, where each group preserves its own identity by building together a plurality, which does not threaten, but rather reinforces unity. I believe we're already seeing this in the United States, where they're introducing Islamic teachings into our public schools and among our children. Yes, Pope Francis, we are listening. God give us discernment so that we will not be deceived. We are broadcasting to the faithful remnant, but there are many things in the world that will pull you down and destroy your trust in God alone. There are many things that will distract you from following Christ in obedience to all of His commands. Therefore, it is essential that we have a clear understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We all know that Jesus Christ came to save the sinner and give them a new life in Him. But what many of us have forgotten is the true nature of sin. Yes, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But what is sin? We will all agree to disobey any of His commandments is sin. But how many can you quote? You might say, if I love God and my fellow man, that I have fulfilled His commandments. But don't forget that He has given us over 127 commands in the New Testament alone to show us how to love God and how to love one another. On our own, we cannot obey. But with God, all things are possible. Not only has He promised to save us, but give us the ability to obey all of His commandments and trust Him alone. This is all by the grace of God, not by works lest any man should boast. This grace comes through faith, believing in Jesus Christ who is the true Son of the living God, who died, was buried, and raised on the third day, opens a door to a new life in Him. 
This is a life where all of our sins are forgiven and we are made into a brand new creation where old things pass away. From the very first day, we're given the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth, producing every manner of spiritual fruit. This eternal life misses the sting of death and ushers us into His glorious presence. This free gift is given to those who are called into His kingdom. So, dear saint, don't spurn such a great a salvation by denying the faith and trusting the world to solve your problems. Don't deny the faith by believing that there are other paths to salvation. Don't deny the faith if you enter a time of persecution. Dear children, don't deny the faith even if you lose your life. To remain faithful to Jesus will bring a great inner joy in the midst of your greatest trials and give you the assurance of your salvation. Dear friends, remember God's word that says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. Dear friend, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord by placing all of your trust in Him to make you into a new creation and forgive you of all your sins, then you can do that right now in the privacy of your own home. Come to Jesus right now confessing and repenting of your sins, telling Him that you believe that He is the Son of the living God and the only path to salvation, asking Him to take full control of your life as Lord. Then send me a message letting me know of your decision so that we can pray together and rejoice. Amen. You are listening to Tribulation Radio.
our radio ministry is to help you stand firm in the last days. For many years now, I have preached, taught, and written four books to help every believer to experience freedom from the bondages of their old life and the ruthless attacks of Satan, dragging many into a life of despair and psychotropic drug addiction. My greatest desire is to lead every believer to experience the tremendous joy that comes from their new life in Christ Jesus. Therefore, I am offering to those who are listening to Tribulation Radio all four books, Final Warning, Stand Firm, Guiding Principles of Biblical Counseling, and Revelation Truth for a one-time donation of $10 per book or $30 for all four books, which include shipping and handling for those living in the United States. And for our friends in Canada, please add an additional $5 per book for postage. Please understand, my friends, that this one-time offer barely covers the cost of books and shipping. May God use these materials to draw you closer to Him while you boldly stand firm in your faith. Thank you for listening to Tribulation Radio. I pray that God has richly blessed your listening experience. Please help us spread the truth by telling your friends and family about Tribulation Radio. May our God bless and protect you until we meet again. Mm -hmm.